Hello and welcome, my name is John Strand and in this video we're going to talk a little bit about Honey Badger. Now in a number of other videos, a number of other things whenever you're talking about attribution or cyber deception, you can focus on creating documents or elements that will beacon back and many times you can collect the IP address that's making the beacon. And that's okay, but IP address geolocation isn't all that hot. But we can do better and we have a specific tool that was created by our very own Bradley at Black Hills Information Security um, building on the work of Tim Tomes or Landmaster 53. Hopefully these two will be merged in the very near future called Honey Badger. Now if we jump right in Honey Badger is on the ADHD installation and once again if you want ADHD you can go to activecountermeasures.com you can go to our free tools check out our projects and you'll see ADHD there. This is of course the distribution that I use for Wild West Hacking Fest classes and also at Black Hat, so check it out. All the instructions once you get ADHD set up are on the desktop in a file called ADHD Usage. Once you have opened up that document, you would select Attribution and then you would select Honey Badger. Now, once you're in the Honey Badger instructions, it goes into a lot of detail about how to set up Honey Badger, how to configure Honey Badger. One of the big gotchas is you do need a Google API key in order to make the map function work in Honey Badger. So let's talk a little bit about what this actually does. Well, what it's doing is a wireless site survey. Here I have a USB wireless adapter that I got off the Hack5 shops, great stuff over there. And with this USB wireless adapter, I can do a survey of all the wireless networks. Now, you don't need a USB wireless adapter for Honey Badger to work. That's not quite what I'm saying. But your computer system has the ability to see all the wireless networks around it. This is something you see every time you open up your phone looking for a wireless hotspot or your computer. That's because these access points are beaconing out about 10 times per second, announcing their BSSID and their ESSID. The BSSID is the MAC address, the Media Access Control address for the access point, and the ESSID is the actual access point name. What Honey Badger does is causes the attacker's computer system to do a wireless site survey, give us those SSIDs, BSSIDs, and ESSIDs, and then it queries Google's API for geolocation and Google responds back. So let's actually take a look at the interface of Honey Badger and some of the things that you would see there. First, whenever you're setting up Honey Badger, you would set up targets. Now, the idea of a target is so that you can set up different campaigns that are identifiable from each other. So I have demo, I have class, I have spearfish, and they have different GUIDs. This is important because if I set multiple different Honey Badger elements, I want to be able to differentiate from them. I can put it in an Excel spreadsheet, I can put it on a website, I can put it in a variety of different places, and that distinction is important. Also on this uh, slide, you can generate a raw macro. Whenever I click the macro button, it actually takes me to the macro that you would put into an Excel spreadsheet or if you're really desperate, a Word document. I tend not to use this technology much in Word documents because everybody knows not to run any macros that show up in Word documents. And what this does is a PowerShell command where it does a wireless site survey of all the different wireless networks that are around. Now that's the macro. We also have the capability of kicking out vb.net code. With the vb.net code, we can actually convert this to a standalone executable with something like vbc and mono. Um, this is all in the class and it's also in the instructions, but basically you would install mono, start the mono shell as an administrator. I can actually show you what that looks like here. So I can um, basically go down to the start button and type mono. And then when it says the mono command prompt, I right click and run it as administrator. And then I would use VBC to actually, um, to actually convert that code, the macro.vb uh, into an executable and actually convert it down to an executable. And then when you run it, it'll do the geolocation. Now that executable gives us tremendous flexibility to move it into a wide variety of different other formats. We can convert it and merge it with other executables uh, like VPNs, things of that nat nature. And then we can get some really good geolocation on an attacker. Now, once I'm in ADHD, I wanna show you what the maps look like and give you an idea of the accuracy. So if I click the map tab, these are all the times that I've actually fired it off and I'll go over here 
to Las Vegas the last time I ran this class at Black Hat. I went too far, a land where I cannot return from. Uh, let's see, I'm in Tuba City, so Grand Canyon National Park, Flagstaff. Let's go back down into my little arrow. Here we go. So let's zoom in to Las Vegas and on top of the Mandalay Bay and give you an idea just how accurate this thing can be whenever you fire it up. Now this is the executable. The macro, if you put it inside of an Excel spreadsheet, would be also really, really hyper accurate. Um, but it really depends on a number of things. Um, if they actually are on a wireless network, you can pull that up. And here you can see that it's the Mandalay Bay. And if I switch it over to satellite, you're going to see right exactly where we were in the conference center um, the last time I actually fired this off. So that's kind of cool. So Honey Badger is designed for extreme levels of attribution. This is using macros or VB code to actually do that. Now, with that in mind, also remember you're just getting the attacker system to give the wireless networks that are around it. If I click on the log and I scroll all the way down to the bottom of the logs here, you can see what it looks like whenever you're actually querying that data. It actually pulls all of the wireless access points. Here you can see Black Hat and then the BSS IDs. And then it submits that data to Google. Now when Google receives that data through the API that Google uses on your phone all the time, Google will respond back with the latitude here. It'll respond back with the longitude here. And it'll also give you the overall accuracy in meters. Sometimes it's around 100 meters. Sometimes you get lucky and it's down to 20 meters. This is extreme levels of attribution. Now, is there a question as to the legalities of this? Well, if you look at what we're doing, the attacker would have to break into your environment, steal something, and then it would trigger. That's kind of dubious that actually press charges in that situation. Further, we're using the same API that your phone is using hundreds of times per minute every single day. So with that in mind, it becomes a little bit easier for us to use these technologies as defenders. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out more videos. Be sure to check out the class at Wild West Hackenfest in San Diego and in Deadwood. And I hope to see you on Wednesdays with Enterprise Security Weekly with Paul, Matt, and myself. Take care, and I'll see you in another video. This episode was brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, specializing in pen testing, red teaming, threat hunting, webcast, open source tools, and blogs. It was also brought to you by AI Hunter from Active Countermeasures. The AI stands for actual intelligence. Need a threat hunting solution for the network? Check out AI Hunter. It is also brought to you by Wild West Hackenfest, currently offering conferences in San Diego and Deadwood, South Dakota. To check out the schedule and the speaker lineup, check out wildwesthackenfest.com.